Can you really gain more by doing less? Over the past few years, there's been a growing buzz around something called muscle resensitization. But what exactly does that mean and why should you care? Well, let's break it down. When you first start training, you probably notice those fast, exciting gains in muscle size and strength. That early progress is often the most dramatic you'll experience in your entire lifting career. Unfortunately, as time goes by and as your body adapts, those gains begin to slow down. Eventually, for many people, they hit a plateau, or at least muscle growth becomes such a slow process that it feels like you aren't making any meaningful progress. So here's the big question. Is there a way to bring back those rapid results? Well, some researchers think that there might be, and it's all about temporarily stepping away from training to actually resensitize your muscles. The idea is based on the slowing of muscle growth that's often observed in resistance training studies along with mechanistic work in rodents, which seems to suggest that the molecular signaling associated with muscle growth, which is basically proteins that are active to tell your muscles to grow, are activated less following several bouts of training, but are resensitized after a period of non-training. In other words, some people believe that muscles might become desensitized to training, but with strategic pauses, or what some people might refer to as a deload, maybe it's possible to resensitize them. One study from 2013 looked at a version of this idea. The researchers had one group of participants train very hard with the bench press three times per week for 24 weeks straight. Another group followed a periodic schedule, training for six weeks, then taking three weeks off and repeating that cycle over the same 24 week period. Now here's what's interesting. Despite taking a total of six weeks off, the periodic group saw similar muscle growth in the chest and the triceps compared to the group that trained for the entire 24 weeks. That sparked interest in the idea that taking time off doesn't just help with recovery, it might actually boost your gains by resensitizing your muscles. So based on these findings and the findings of others, the authors of a 2024 study wanted to explore what they viewed as a more typical deload. Since most gym goers don't take three weeks off of training at any one time, but instead taking a single week off training might be more common. Now, with that said, colleagues set out to answer the following research question. What happens if resistance trained individuals take one week break halfway through a nine week training program? The researchers wanted to see if this short deload could lead to better results, possibly by resensitizing the muscle to the training stimulus. To test the effects of a deload, the researchers recruited individuals who were experienced with resistance training. This was defined as consistently lifting weights at least three times per week on most weeks with at least one weekly session for the lower body muscles for at least one year. All participants followed the same nine week training program built around an upper and a lower body training split. Essentially, it was two upper body sessions and two lower body sessions. For the lower body, participants performed the Smith machine squat, the leg extension, the straight leg toe press, and a seated calf raise. It is interesting to note, however, the lack of posterior lower body work in this program, particularly the lack of glute specific and hamstring work. Nevertheless, on each exercise, participants performed five sets of eight to 12 reps performed at an intensity of a repetition max to failure, and they were allowed two minutes of rest between sets. The participants were also given a mandatory upper body program, which they were asked to complete on their alternative training days without supervision from the research staff. The participants performed four weekly sessions for the duration of nine weeks. However, as I described earlier, the authors included a deload group that did not train during week five of the program. The participants were asked to maintain their current dietary habits for the duration of the study. So let's take a look at the results. A total of 39 individuals completed the study with 18 in the deload group and 21 in the non-deload group. The authors observed similar muscle growth in both groups. However, the non-deload group demonstrated slightly better improvements in the isometric knee extension strength and the Smith machine back squat strength. The authors ultimately conclude that a one week deload does not attenuate or enhance muscle adaptations over a nine week period. They also suggest that their data provide evidence against this idea of muscle resensitization from the deload. Now, this is an interesting study and it is good to know that you can take a week off training without any negative consequences. However, in the context of this study, can the authors really conclude that their findings provide evidence against muscle resensitization? 
So let's talk about it. Consider this, since lower body muscle growth was the focus of this paper, this study essentially is comparing muscle growth from 16 lower body workouts over nine weeks, at least for those in the deload group, to 18 lower body workouts in the non-deload group. So you could argue that this study was really testing if the amount of muscle growth resulting from two additional resistance training sessions is detectable by B-mode ultrasound. If you want my opinion, I believe the authors were trying to detect a difference in muscle thickness that they would never be able to measure. On top of that, the study reported a training compliance of 96% overall, with every participant hitting at least 85% of their training sessions. Now that means if individuals in the non-deload group missed just one or two sessions, their total workout volume could have matched the workout volume of the deload group. And that could definitely blur the lines between the groups even more. So to me, it's not surprising that there were no major differences observed between the two groups. Now the authors claim that their data argues against the idea of muscle resensitization after a deload. But here's the problem. They never actually measured muscle size right after the deload week. So why does that matter? You might be wondering. Well, let's say somebody did lose a small amount of muscle during that week off and then they gained it back faster once training resumed. Well, that faster growth could very well suggest resensitization, but the study wasn't designed to detect that. So in short, the conclusion of this paper doesn't match the design or the data. Now, despite these limitations, the study still offers something valuable to take away, especially if you've ever stressed out about missing a week of training. So the takeaway here is you can still make gains even with a short break in your training cycle. Between this and the earlier work like the Agasawara studies, there's growing evidence that brief pauses in training don't kill your progress. However, when it comes to proving the theory of resensitization, well, this study doesn't have the design to answer that question. So how has this content been framed on social media? Well, let's take a look at a post from the authors of this paper. Are deloads a waste of time on deloads Max Coleman. What about deloads? Did you just say deloads? Yes. Okay. What's the deload? Look, there's no reason to believe that deloads are going to lead to some sort of resensitization in muscle growth and especially not for strength, right? But don't think it's going to lead to some magical future growth in later training cycles. That's all we need. So now that you've seen this Instagram clip, it's important to know that the authors can't actually speak to resensitization for the reasons that we've just described. It's also important to note that this study employed a deload when there was no real reason to do so. The authors had the participants training with a fairly low training volume, hitting their upper and lower body just twice a week. So we have to be careful not to draw conclusions beyond what the data can actually tell us. Now in this case, deloads probably don't serve much of a purpose following four weeks of relatively low training volume. However, they may serve a much greater purpose following periods of overreaching or for those following a very high volume training mesocycle. So what is my main takeaway here? Well, if you're performing a relatively low volume training program and you miss a few sessions, we probably can't measure a loss in muscle size over eight weeks time. Now, is this because the muscle was resensitized and more rapid growth is observed by the onset of training? Well, possibly, but additional studies are certainly necessary to help us determine this. And finally, don't undervalue the importance of deloads based off this one paper. This paper showed that a deload has no meaningful purpose when it was implemented for no apparent reason. However, there may certainly be times when a deload provides much needed recovery. That's all I have for you folks today. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any questions about today's video, please feel free to drop me a comment. And for more information on my one-on-one -on -one coaching, my workout app via fit, my educational books and research and other free resources, feel free to check out the links in the description below.